So underneath your heading, what I'd love you to jot down is a table just like the kind that you were making in 1201, which is just one of the many ways that we can use to describe a pattern and then bring a rule out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick example of what I'm talking about, and then you're going to have a go at this yourself. That's why we have so many matchsticks today. They're not mainly for me, they're mainly for you. So let's have a look at this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a pattern here. And what I'd love you to do is two things for this first example. Um, we're going to draw the pattern as it grows, and then we're going to create a table that corresponds to that. Now we're just going to work this first example together so that when I give you a few that I'm not going to work through with you, you'll know what to do. Okay, so let's start off real, real simple. Um, we're going to begin, let me see that, yes, fantastic. I'm going to begin with, uh, I'll move over a little bit so you can see it there. So. We've got these matchsticks, actually I need to be a little further over this way it looks like. Okay, so yeah that'll do, I think that'll be enough space. So you can see this is my first shape. So this is going to be shape one. So I'm going to go to my table, I'm going to say shape one, and you can tell me how many matchsticks it requires. It's just four. Fantastic. So this is a relationship between the number of shapes, the number of matchsticks, and I'm just going to make this pattern grow. Now I'm going to do a really simple one for this first one. So the next one I'm going to put on, let's see if I put this in the right spot. I'm going to move it uh, up a little bit actually. Up is down on my screen. So, yeah, sorry, you're just a bit too high. There we go. Okay, here comes the next one. Could you please draw this as a separate shape? So you'll need to draw a whole first copy of this one, and then your second shape will include both of them together. So shape number one, you can draw it up, you've already done it probably, and then shape number two is both of them put together. So I'd love them to be separate. So this is shape number two. And again, you can count how many matchsticks it requires. All together, I've got Eight, fantastic. Okay, one last one, bless you, to establish the pattern, and then we can go from there. Here we go. Okay, so this is the final one I'm gonna show you in the pattern if I can get it in the right spot. How's that, can you see the whole thing? Okay, fantastic, so this is shape number three, and how many matchsticks have I got in total? Twelve. Twelve, excellent. Okay, now from here we could do one of two things. Uh, we could either work out what you think the next shape will be without actually drawing it, or we could also create a relationship, a pattern, a rule that explains what's going on here. Okay, so maybe we'll do it in order. How many, without actually constructing it, how many matchsticks will I need if I add on shape number four, Vishaka? Three, six. Say it a bit louder. 16. Now, how did we get 16 without actually doing it? Louise, what are you seeing? Well, I, was, I had another answer. Yeah. Because right now we have 12, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but then can't you just add one in between here? Because you've got three and you get four. Aha, uh -huh, you're talking about one here, yeah. right? Now, I guess this is a bit tricky. When you're trying to establish a pattern, right? Um, I could have all different kinds of patterns. For all, for all you know, I could be going up and around, or I could be going and creating just more squares, and I could put in two here and I'd get another square. But I am trying to make this up and down and up and down, so I'm going to continue going in this direction, even though I could validly have given that answer as well. So here's my question, right? What's the relationship between S, the number of shapes we're up to, and M, the number of matchsticks that we used. Go ahead, Hannah. S times four, S times four equals M. Do we agree with that? Yes. Whatever shape number you've got, you just multiply it by four, and off you go. Okay, fantastic. Well, what I want you to do just underneath this is to write down that this is what we call a simple linear pattern. We'll explain what we mean by that middle word, which is kind of really important and unusual, um, a little bit later on, but for now I'd just like you to have it jotted down. Okay, now for this next one, I'm not going to ask you to write it down, I just want to give you a sense of what something that isn't quite so simple looks like. So don't worry about writing or drawing this next part, in fact just put the pencils out of your hands and pens out of your hands and just watch for this next bit. Okay, so this next pattern is going to start the same way. 
Whoops. I'm a bit uncoordinated. Okay. It begins in exactly the same way that we saw before, but I'm going to build it in a very, very slightly different fashion. Okay? So this time, without drawing it or writing it, I just want you to think about the difference between this pattern and the previous one. Here's shape number two. So we started off the same way. Shape number two, though, I'm building it a little bit differently. I want you to think about this for a second. Okay? And then where do you think shape number three is going to go? Off to the... Right, so I'm going to put down, let's use this one, this one, and this one. Whoops. Okay, so this one's a little more unusual, isn't it? I still end up with three squares, don't I? But I'm building it in a bit of a different fashion. Okay, I'm going to hit pause. I asked you not to do the writing and the drawing just now, but now that I've shown you the whole thing, I'd like you to go through again. Create a table. It doesn't have to be big or beautiful, but we want the numbers in there. You can see the completed shape now. And you can sort of rewind back in time to see what shape two and shape one were. And then again, I want you to see if you can come up with a rule for this. Have a think. Call me over if you reckon you have something. Um, where did I write down? Is it um, S, three, S plus one equals two? Interesting theory. Jump down first. And I want to give everyone a bit more time. Jessica, what would be a really good question is, how could you convince yourself of that case without, say, Mrs. Lee's or I saying, yes, that's correct, or no, that's wrong? Like, what, make, what, what makes you think that? How could you convince a friend, for example, that that's what you think the rule is? Okay? Hey, what do you think, Sandy? Mm. Interesting. So what I want to ask you is, how can you tell whether this is correct or not? I wrote down. So I did the same thing that you mm -hmm, did, mm -hmm. like count the squares and count mm -hmm. the matchsticks. Mm -hmm. And this is pretty much the pattern that I got. Mm -hmm. So one of the great ways we can know whether a pattern is right or not is to see what happens for the next one and continue. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm seeing a few more hands up. It's okay if not everyone is there. I wonder if someone can suggest to me what they've got for their pattern between S and M, have you got a new equation for you? Merrick, what are you thinking? Um, M equals 1 times 3 plus 1, that would be S. 1 times 3 plus 1. Plus 1. Okay, so let's just hold on for a second, right? What we've got here... S, sorry, sorry. S, S times 3? Yes. Yeah, okay, uh, before we go on to that, um, what have we got here? Well, this is uh, an explanation of the rule, but in a specific example. This would be which shape number? This is, this is the first one, isn't it? Because uh, 1 times 3 plus 1, that's 4 matchsticks, which is the way the shape began, yes? But what we want to do is say, what about for any particular shape? What for 2, for 3, for 4? So we put our S in here. Um, what will be a way? We usually actually don't write S times 4 or S times 3. We have a, a shorter, lazier way of doing it. We usually say 4S here or 3S here. Does that make sense? Okay. And maybe you already wrote that down straight away. Now, what I'd love you to do is to label this one as, well, it's not just a simple linear pattern. We had to modify it a little bit. You see, we didn't just use multiplication. I had to include this other operation. I had to do some addition as well. Um, and you could do subtraction too, depending on the pattern you create. All right, now I've shown you two patterns. I'm going to show you one last one, and this time we're not going to write anything down at all. I'm just going to show it to you. Okay, so I'm going to start off as promised, like this. We all start off like this, but now the next one I'm going to put on is going to look a little different. Okay. This shape number two, can you see the whole thing? Sorry that this part's a bit low. Um, you can probably see I'm already running out of space. I'm not going to be able to draw on or put on the matchsticks for shape number three. So I'm going to draw it for you. This is shape two. What would you predict shape three looks like? How could we add lines onto here? Dave, what are you thinking? Um, so add a line in between or make another square inside. I am going to make another square, but do you notice how I went from the first one and I made a bigger square? So I'm going to make the next one even, even bigger. It's going to keep on going. So like this, that's shape number three. Okay. Now, this one is even trickier. I'm just going to say to you guys right now, you know how this is a simple linear pattern? This one, I'll label, label it for you. Call this one a, um, a modified linear pattern. 
This third one that we just made is not linear at all. Um, it's still a pattern. I mean, you could probably give me the next one, right? What would the next one look like? Yeah, yeah I, j I just keep on going further out and then go like so. All right? Yeah, Jessica, question. Oh, or do you have a like, thought on it? Yeah. Um, For that one? Yeah. Okay, interesting. I'll come and have a conversation with you in a second. For now, I want to show you all where you're going to go from here. Wake up, computer. Do, 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 do. Two to your thumbs. Success. Okay, let's put this down. In fact, we might just get the lights for a second if you please, so everyone can see it real clearly. Okay. So what we did was we walked you through those few here. I'm not going to walk you through these because we're going to do something slightly different for it. I've got three new patterns here that kind of correspond to the three patterns you just saw. Okay? Um, this is the final, the third state for each of them. So we start with one, then two, then three. This one we start with one, this kind of L shape up in the corner, and then two, and then three. And then how would you describe, what words would you use to describe that last shape over there? It's kind of like a pyramid, right? And it's starting from the top and it's going further and further down and it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger at the base. Okay? So, here is what we're going to work on together, and for part C, I'm going to ask you to actually work in pairs because I do not have enough, even though it's a lot of matchsticks, it's not enough for every single individual. We're going to have a, a disaster on, on the tables. So here's what I'd like you to do. For these three, for these three, what I'd love you to do is create the table just like we did before, but do it up to the sixth shape. I'm only showing you up to the third. I'd love you to do one, two, three, four, five, and six. Um, for the first two, just like we did just now, I'd love you to come up with that, that rule that relates the number of shapes to the number of matchsticks that you use. And then lastly, I'd love you to come up with your own shapes. And there's going to be one for this one, a simple one, one for this one, a modified one, and then one that you can't easily come up with a rule for, but you can still draw. Okay? All right. Quick question. Um, no, they don't. Yeah, they don't have to touch, but we do have to, you have to be able to give this pattern to someone else, and they have to be able to follow what's going on on the basis of just looking at it, okay? So I'm going to leave this here. Mrs. Lees? Should people be drawing the patterns to their tables? So, we're going to be giving you these so you can actually create them, but just like we did for the first one, we want you to be drawing them so that you have a record of them, because after that, these will be gone and you don't get to keep them. Sorry, we're taking them back for the next time we teach. Does that make sense? So you're going to be drawing and creating some tables and then also making up your own shapes. Any questions?